What's happening guys? Dan here, DD Speed Shop. Today, uh, 55 Nomad, again, as per usual, story of my life. We're doing the brakes. So I had bought a kit off eBay, uh, probably a month or six weeks ago or something like that, and I built this chassis, and, but the body was not on it. So we'd, we'd since swapped, uh, swapped the body on. So I just had the spindles and, and all that. So it's got brand new brakes, uh, discs, adapters and uh, calipers that's all together the whole front has been rebuilt now new steering new everything so now we actually have to plumb it do all that sort of work now i did buy it's a power disc brake kit it really went all over the money there actually it was the same price as the mechanical one so i put a few things out just to kind of show you what we're going to do and then we'll set the camera up and kind of give her it's got a little bracket here which converts it from the standard uh what it was just all sitting there but this is going to go from standard chevy it would have had a single pot master into this which then fits on our booster. So I think this is a eight inch, it's kind of a small one. So it looks like it should fit okay with clearance of the valve cover. So we're good on that. It does come with a new adjustment rod, clevis and all that. So the factory one we'll have to take out. And the reason for that is the factory one just has a round edge, which is meant to go in just the, the back of the, the master but because we're running a booster, this piece actually has to thread in. Which actually, I did this on Danny's car, it was quite a hassle. It's got a bunch of adjustment and stuff, so we've got to get that done. Then the master will then go on the edge of that, so it'll stick out quite a bit. So that's kind of that hardware. It then comes with everything you need. It has a bracket and the metering blocks and all that, and actually pre-bent lines ready to go. So you can kind of plumb it, it gives you a little diagram. So that's what it's gonna look like. We'll screw it on or bolt it on with the uh, the master and it just has this little stuff there and then we'll have to plumb obviously out of here, which is, it's very simple. They're all the exact same. And that, this kit was pretty good. It came with everything you need. Usually I buy a base kit and you gotta buy stuff and this is like, you know, 60 bucks here, 50 bucks there. So pretty simple, this will bolt in. Uh, two feed lines will go in. The back always goes to the rear brakes and these two front ones will go across you can plug one tee it or do whatever you want that's for the front brakes so that's all that and then we just have a couple of hydraulic lines i'll drop in here which will go from the lines we're going to plumb to the calipers and that's it i do have to run a line all the way to the back i think i have enough i got a bunch of lines so i should be fine all the way to the back and then i just run a nova uh rubber hose i find they're nice and long easy to accomplish Drop that down to the rear, and then I do have, I think it's in the hallway, but I bought all brand new rear brake stuff. So I'll get at least the front done. If that stuff's all there, if it showed up in the mail, I got all from Rock Auto. We should be able to bang together the rear brakes over everything except for drums, because drums are a fortune to ship. So hopefully these ones are still good. I'll measure them up. If they're good, I'll have them cut. Otherwise, I'll uh, figure something else out. But we don't need that for right now. It'll, it'll run and, or it'll stop, I guess. It'll steer and stop. Then we can focus on the running. So let's get uh, started on this. It should actually go together in a hurry because it's a meant to be kit and there's nothing in the way. This, uh, I've done this a bunch of times. Take the front clip off or take the rat out and all that. Cause when you're running lines around, you know, it's so much easier. You're not screwing around with belts and fans and radiators and exhausts. So yeah, we'll get after it. Should be a, should be an easy one. Should get it done tonight, guaranteed. Or this video tomorrow. Doesn't this look better already? So I figured I'd assemble it and then kind of show you versus trying to film it while I'm putting it together because I'll be blocking everything. So step one, you got to put this bracket on. You do have to shorten up the factory bolts, or at least the top ones, because you can see the mounting bolts there. Well, you got to shorten one of them, whatever it may be. You have to adjust the rod a few times to get that going. So we're, we're hooked up to the pedal and then the master just goes on. Now the master will have to be bench bled or we could bleed it on the car or whatever it may be. More of this is just to see if everything's going to fit, which it looks like it should be pretty good. So up next, we'll put on the metering block, which goes somewhere in this vicinity, hook up two lines. And then really all we got to do, I probably should do it in the past, I've run into it where you bleed the master, but then you got to kind of bleed the proportioning valve as well. Like it just, you got to each step of the way down. So I think what I might do is hook up the proportioning valve and then put the portioning valve in the front and then rear, make a few lines, just go into it. And I'll show you how to bench bleed it that way. That will go through the master 
and the proportioning valve the whole way so that this system will be full of fluid that we can run our lines and just kind of snap one or two at a time. And yeah, so honestly it went pretty good. The, I had some screw around with Danny's car. She had a, I bought a different kit and the rod was a little funny to adjust. It's, it's really kind of finickety and Danny's car had too much pressure on it. So when the brake was up, it didn't quite release and slowly but surely it was keeping pressure, it was building pressure on the front brakes and by the end of it you're just blazing tires through your foot off the brakes, you have to come out and, and uh, crack the line, let the pressure out and I got home and then adjusted the, the rod. So you want to have a little bit of play in the pedal before you're actually right into the brakes. So we'll see what happens there, you can always adjust that down the road. I mean the car is this far apart, you're not going to put it together first time and just have it work perfectly. This is an overhaul, and I mean, I, as much as I wish it was. So, we'll get this piece hooked up, all the lines hooked up, and then I think it's going to be a break for supper because after that, we got to, we'll, you know, start plumbing the front lines, bleed the master, plumb the whole front, end, which will actually go pretty quick. We'll get that done tonight for sure, and then carry on with the back tomorrow. Well, I was inside and I uh, picked up some stuff. I thought. Uh, well, Rock Out did show up today, but it was a carpet kit, not the rear brakes. That's like we here for a couple days. So, I think we'll do. I started plumbing the front brakes a little bit. I don't have any tie down little insulated clamps. Idiot. So, I gotta get some of those tomorrow. Uh, I don't have the, well, the little clips that hold this together, but it should. This should fit okay, I think, with the inner fenders. I think they kind of run to about there ish. And so, we'll get that. We can plumb the fronts. We got the hydraulic hose. The uh, hydraulic hose seems a little, a little on the tight side, but I guess it's okay. So we get that together, and then uh, tomorrow we'll get some clips. Do that. If I get uh, the clips and or the, the clamps, I should say, I run a fuel line. I do have the fuel tank. I do have fuel tank straps. So I think that's what we'll do. We'll get the front brakes plumbed. Maybe we'll jam the front shocks in. We'll hook up the fuel tank, and we'll run a brake line back and a fuel line forward and then call our video because that's a lot of stuff to get done right yeah this thing's looking good so i gotta track down a distributor i mean i actually have a bunch of old used ones but I'd like i put a new one in and we got what we want to do with the exhaust and set of front pulleys and when i bought the oil pan kit instead of just buying the oil pan gasket i bought a full uh, gasket kit for small block chevy because let's be honest i'll use the gaskets at some point and i need a distributor o-ring i need a water pump, I mean, you start nickel and diming these things together, you'll be 60, 70 bucks in gaskets, or you can buy the whole kit for 100. At least that's my reasoning. So if we can get that together and put the carburetor on, start making it look like a motor. This is this is the fun part. New parts just bolting on, and it just works. Well, works-ish. Got to get a new set of rear tires because they're junk. But yeah, man, I am excited on this thing. New day, uh, got some Clamps, we got that going. Um, I did find some quarter inch brake line. Unfortunately, I don't have any tube nuts for it, so I gotta do that, but this should be enough. I can run to the back. Uh, check the mail. 3 8 hard line, so we'll plumb that all the way back. And I have the fuel tanks on the roof. I have the straps, I think they're on the ground somewhere. So we'll make that work. Hopefully, I don't know how it bolts up. It was missing everything. I'll have to figure something out. But we've got that. So fuel line in the front, brake line in the back. We got to finish off. This is just sitting here. Uh, the other side. This side's all good. What else did I get? Oh, I got the uh, the little clips that hold the hydraulic line to the car. So we should have, I think, everything we need to get the front brakes done and the back brakes run to the back and then tube nuts and all that. I'm still waiting on the order from Rock Auto. Should be here tomorrow. Apparently it was the update. So that'll be another video. Then we can maybe put the carburetor on and I'd like to run a nice hard line up to the carburetor. It had that uh, kind of fake AN style line with a bunch of hose clamps on it. I think it looks kind of janky. So I'll run a hard line up to it and then at some point we'll have to split it and put a inline fuel filter or something like that. But for now we'll get this front plumbed up. We'll get the carburetor on. Uh, we might even plumb the line down to the uh, fuel pump. We'll make it look pretty in here and be done with it. And then we'll climb under. All right, let's get it. Let's get to it.
Okay, pile of progress we made. We got the line run, uh, put the valve cover stuff together, carburetor's on, new gasket, new studs. Carburetor looks a little, needs a little cleaning. Uh, everything fixed up for one, it's got these like speed T handle things, which are kind of ridiculous, but it has them, came with the motor, but it's going to hit the booster, so we'll just need to put a bolt in the back. This has reusable like rubber gaskets, they look decent, but again, this all comes apart, so I can change it. Uh, what else do we got going? I got to figure out the bracketry. I think this is like an old style kind of uh, version of the water pump, so probably have a alternator on the driver's side. I mean, I do have the ram horns, which I believe that's what these brackets or this, these uh, bosses are for, so I could probably put it over there. Then it does have that long bell, the big whip, which I'm not a big fan of. Over here would be nicer, but there's no boss for the for the standard kind of low deck, whatever you want to call it, bracket. So we'll figure something out. Also, it's got a really long water neck, so I think I have a, a long neck pulley, and then down here I'll probably just have a single pulley, like no bell or whatever you want to call on it. So that's the plan. I do like this water pump, I means aluminum came with it, it looks kind of fancy, so we're going to put it on. Uh, I got some new hardware for it, bolts. So we'll take this off, clean it up real quick, we'll jam this on. Once this is off, you can see I bent up a uh, fuel line. So that turned out pretty decent. Uh, I'll probably split it either there or behind the fuel pump actually. I could put a uh, an inline filter, make it look nice. But really, things all kind of come together. So we'll get this cleaned up. We'll get that bolted down. I think that's all I really accomplished. And then uh, I'm gonna clean up a little because it's an absolute disaster in here. And crank the heat on high because I'll be under the car and that's well, it's cold down there. And then we'll put the fuel tank in, run the fuel line, and maybe we'll run the brake line. It won't be flaring either end, so it's a bit of a hassle to kind of take apart to reflare, but it has to get done. So, yeah, let's get this water pump mounted. So, I got everything kind of piled up. We got to, I got to load a bunch of stuff into the truck because we got, we got garbage. So this is the fuel tank and uh, it is kind of wagon specific. It's got this indent in it, which obviously that goes in the uh, tire well. I got a set of straps. They're the same as sedan straps. Well, I did research, they have the same part number, so hopefully They'll all be the same. Um, I got a tank, a brand new sender. Same thing, sender. I got one just for a wagon, which this all looks identical to uh, that 56 I did. The only problem we're going to run into here, this car had no tank in it when I got it. Probably had a fuel cell or something like that. And the filler neck is different on a 55 because it goes out the quarter panel and a 6 and a 7 go out behind the tail light or in the trim there. So I'll have to modify something or I might have one downstairs because I ripped up a bunch of those uh, 55s a while ago and kept them all as parts. So that's that and then this vent I plugged off. Again the 57 has a vented 
filler and sedans anyways 55 sedans and six sedans do not but whatever the 57 tank is actually quite a bit nicer it's got a uh, drain bung in it which you'd be surprised but i've actually used it a few times So this only kind of fits one way, this little gasket, and then this, where does this go? You want the filler up and down, or the, uh, not the filler, the sender, I guess I should say, up and down. So we'll put a couple screws in this, it'll be good. Uh, there was a couple options there for a 3 8 or 5 16 uh, feed line, I got three eighths because they're the same price. I don't know if there's any difference to it. I can't imagine this thing will need every last dollop of fuel, but if it does, we're ready for it. So I'll get this jammed together. I'll clean these boxes up. And then I'm going to crank the heat on a little bit because i got to lie on my back. We should be able to just kind of fit this in, put two straps on it. I might have to make a little uh, hanger for the bolts. And the fuel tank will be in. Just that easy. New parts. Oh, and one more thing. This tank here. So originally I was going to get it through like a classic car supplier. It was going to be $400 plus the sender. So basically 500 bucks. 450 500 This came from Rock Auto. I think it was $199. And the sender was $40 or $50. Uh, I did have to pay oversized shipping. Or freight which is a bit of a pain especially being in Canada but all said and done I think I got it for like three hundred and fifty dollars or something like that, like after tax after shipping and everything versus buying it from an actual place it would have been like 200 bucks more so that's what I hate about classic cars you gotta pay like the classic car tax when it's just a part like you know a fuel tank on a neon is dirt cheap a radiator on a neon is dirt cheap but the second it's going to 55 Chevy you know it's the same junk and the mold's been there forever it costs more money so do a little research when you're looking around for stuff because if you can get it from a place like rock auto or a local supplier this is a specter i think tank it's actually made in canada it, so i don't know i can't imagine there's any difference in quality it looks good to me we'll put it in it'll hold fuel and it'll last the rest of this car's life oh what a job this was so the tank is in as you can see the rear end is out so with the rear end in place you could not get the fuel tank in uh, obviously I moved the jack stand so it was the rear was hanging as much room as you could I forgot about this but uh, that's how it was on the other wagon and it was a freaking nightmare it's all coming back to me so I don't know unfortunately I don't think there really would have been much else I could have done and I mean this this rear was a pain so the locating pin on the other side was broke so the leaves were opening up this one I put a clamp on just in case this is weak or whatever so it doesn't explode but uh, yeah that was a nightmare the one thing is though almost all of the u-bolts came out one on that side I had to cut which is relevant so we put new ones in and the base plate and all that stuff is actually not going to work for what I'm accomplishing here so some sort of other setup i guess and it has the spring on the front on this side and the back on that side so that's common on later model stuff but on these the spring has to or the uh the mount for the shocks i'm talking about has to be to the front and we only have on the one side so either have to be modified or in all reality uh, a proper set tri five ones which may be on the nomad i'm hoping i don't know how the rear end was secured I guess we'll figure it out or I can buy something or make something or whatever. I actually think I have a set of slapper bars downstairs that are uh, meant for tri so they have the proper bolts. I can just weld a tab on that if I want. So anyways, a lot of screwing around, but it's in there, which is nice. But you can now see the conundrum. This is where the fuel filler comes out. It has to go out through there, up around the back and 90 over. So I don't really remember. I'll take a look at my 55 maybe or... Google picture of it 
But I'll, uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'll put this back in the place and I'll put the weight back on the rear end. And I'll show you just how tight this uh, stupid tank is. Oh, look at this gong show. So there, that's the rear end. I got all the weight on it. We'll just get laying there and see how close that is. So it's good. Travel's good. I'm not going to plumb it on this video. I'm, uh, this took way, 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 way longer than I thought it was going to be. It was way more work than it should have been. Oh, but, uh, I guess we're getting it. So we got everything plumbed up, hooked up in the front. Brakes are on. I got to get a tube nut. So I'll get that in the next couple of days. We'll run that when we run the fuel line and some future video, which is not right now because frustration is one, but we're really making progress. I mean, in all reality, if we had a starter on this thing, we could hot wire it and probably make it run. I got to buy a distributor as well. I think I'll probably put a new one on. I'm really, uh, I won't say I'm breaking the budget on this one, but I'm trying not to be cheap and buying, you know, kind of name brand stuff and putting new stuff on because A, it's going to be mine and B, if I sell it, it'll be worth money. Up next, I think what I want to do, I've got all the kill mat and I got a carpet kit. I think I'm going to put the kill mat down on the floor and the sides and all that. I got just a little bit of welding through in the wheel tubs, but I can do that maybe next video or maybe some other time. We'll see. The wheels are off right now. I probably should just do it. But I got a seam seal, kill mat the whole thing, put the carpet down, and then I could be under the dash. I'll rip all the wiring out. And I do have a wiring harness, universal one. I want to slip that in there and get that all going. Um, otherwise, I think the front clip can probably go on permanently, or at least, you know, try and fit it. I got to modify the core support because it was chopped up for the other chassis and stuff. But really, this thing's going to really start looking like a car here. E-brake cables, uh, like all those little kind of piddly things are going to start happening. But all I got just, like I said, a little bit in the wheel wells and a little bit of welding up on this side, but on that side for the trim. So I'm thinking seam seal, clean all the junk out of here, carpet all that in, test fit seats, I ordered a shifter, I got a column, you know, kind of start sourcing it all out. It may not be the proper order, but you know what, I want to get this thing together, make it run and drive. We still got lots of time left for uh, spring rolls around, so that's to come apart or so be it, it is what it is. But having a running driving car, even if it runs poorly, makes my life way, 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 way easier. Plus, we can do some burnouts and stuff, right? Thanks for watching. As always, leave a comment below. And we'll be uh, right back at this. I'm going to have a little break. I'll be back at it tonight. But probably cleaning out and starting on uh, floors. See you later.